Austin. How you guys doing? Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, my name is Amanda Giles. I'm here to talk to you about books. I, uh, I titled my talk Ready Filter Action, but uh, I really think that I should have should have stuck with my other name, which is everything you wanted to know about WordPress hooks, but we're afraid to ask. <laughs> if you'd like to follow along with the slides, I do have a link there to my website. It's amandagiles.com slash WCBOS, just like the hashtag 16. And uh, there are some code samples, but I made them super big, so hopefully uh, they will be visible. So just a quick, uh, what we're going to cover today, we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you about what hooks are. I'm going to talk to you about why you would want to use them, the types of hooks that there are in WordPress. We're going to look at how they work, look at some syntax, look at examples in WordPress. I'm going to talk about creating custom hooks, about checking for them and removing them, and then I'll also have some links at the end for reference material. So let's get started. A little bit about who I am. I have uh, been programming since 1985. I realize it's dating myself, but uh, I learned to program in BASIC and LOGO a great many years ago and fell in love with it and have been learning languages ever since. I made my first website in 1994. I've been being paid to code for over 20 years now. I discovered WordPress in 2009 and fell in love with it. And in 2011, I started a local meetup where I live in Portsmouth, um, the Seacoast New Hampshire WordPress meetup. And then just this year, I actually uh, co-created Spark Development, which is a WordPress web agency, and I actually started that with four other people who I met through, met through my meetup. Oh, and I skipped over that I've been consulting uh, since 2006, so. All right, on to the more interesting things. So, what is a hook? Um, you hear this thrown around a lot in WordPress circles, and you probably use them if you're a theme or plugin developer, but sometimes we use them and we don't really thoroughly understand them. At its essence, a hook is an event or a point of time within WordPress code which allows for additional code to be run when it occurs. And you'll find that developers of WordPress core and also of plugins and even themes will create hooks in their code and they create these hooks at specific points to allow other developers to hook in and run their code. It's essentially like going when you're about to go out to the store and you say, hey, does anybody need anything? It's the equivalent of that in your code. The developer is offering a chance for you to say, yes, actually, I'd like to do something right here. And if you want to look at a real life example, last call is essentially an action hook. The bartender is like, hey, does anybody need anything? It doesn't matter how many people put in their order. He will process all of those orders and um, then move on. So a little bit more about hooks. One of the great things about hooks is that um, you can associate one or more functions with a hook. So you might choose to hook into something and some of your plugins might use, choose to use the same hook. A hook can have, uh, I actually said one or more, but it can even have obviously zero functions associated with it, but it can have multiple functions. Even within your own code, you can write multiple functions that are tied to the same hook. And the way that this can be managed so that it's not quite so chaotic is that WordPress lets you set a priority for those hooks. Most of the time, you don't necessarily care, but sometimes you do care. You want your hook, your function to happen before or after another piece of code. For instance, if you're trying to override something that is happening um, that, that somebody else is already hooking into and changing something, you know, sometimes you put a hook in there and the default for priority is 10, but you might put 999 just to make sure that you happen last. Um, on the other side, you, you might set a lower priority because you want to happen before other things happen. So you have this control. So why use hooks? Hooks are really placed in code for you to use. They're not really much used for people who put them in usually. Sometimes plugins or core do reference themselves, but hooks are essentially placed in so that you as a developer can customize the code that's running without directly editing other people's code. So you've, you're in the developer room, I'm assuming that you've heard that you shouldn't edit WordPress core, and you shouldn't. 
Um, and the, re the way that you get around this is by using the hooks that are placed in WordPress core. Likewise, with functions and themes, hooks are a way for you to provide that customization without going in there and having to copy the plugin or hack core, which is never a good idea. Hooks are essentially the proper way to alter the default behavior of WordPress core of plugins. And that's the, that's the reason that they're so important. There's actually a pet peeve of mine is when plugin authors don't put enough hooks in. Because it is the first thing you should be doing. If you have a plugin and it does almost everything you want it to do, chances are, hopefully, you can look in that code and actually find a hook and make the customization you want. And if you are a plugin or theme developer, um, I think it's important to think about where people might want to customize. You might make certain choices in your code, but just to be aware that um, you should think about where to place hooks to allow other people to make their customizations. It doesn't hurt you to put a, a hook in. You know, it's one line of code, and and then it's up to up to other developers if they use it. The alternative to you not putting a hook in is that somebody takes your code and copies it, copies your plugin just to do the other thing that they want to do, and then they don't get the benefit of your updates um, and all the goodness that you're doing. So. There are two types of hooks in WordPress, action hooks and filter hooks. An action hook is a hook that allows you to simply run code at a certain point in time. It's the example I used before, the proverbial, you know, do you need anything to happen here? So examples in WordPress core include initialization, either of the admin or of, your, of, um, of the front end, Another point is before your main query is run, your header or your footer, those both have action hooks that you can ha allow things to happen. The other type, the second type of hook is a filter hook. And a filter hook is an action hook, just like an action hook, except it has the additional um, attribute that it allows you to alter information. This could be content, this could be parameters, it could be a title of something, it could be any kind of information. What a filter hook does is say, not only do I allow you to run a piece of code right now, but I'm going to pass you some piece of content. It could be a page content, it could be query parameters, it could be uh, an array of arguments for another function, and the filter function accepts that input, takes a look at it, does something, or not, and then passes the data back. So a filter hook is more powerful in that you are being given a chance to modify the data um, that's being processed. It can also be a little more dangerous. You have to pay attention to the fact that you're supposed to return the data. So as a, in a filter function, if you get the content and you look at it and you decide not to do anything with it, but you forget to pass it back, you have essentially told the WordPress core or the plugin that you don't want anything. You, you, you wiped that out entirely. So you do have to be careful to to return the content if it's not your intention to remove it. And examples in WordPress of this um, include any time that you're displaying content, your page titles, widget titles, before you're saving the content. Um, these examples that I give you are super brief. You can look in the codex and there is a huge list um, of plugins. And we'll actually talk about how to find your own hooks that are in, um, in the code. And so not a huge list of plugins, a huge list of filters. So, how exactly do action hooks work? Action hooks are simply triggered by the function do underscore action. Do action gets called with a hook name. That would be the code that would be happening in WordPress core or in a plugin that you do not want to be editing directly. And then in your code, you hook in your function into the code by adding a statement called add underscore action. Um, I'm sorry, a function, add action and you provide the same hook name, and then you provide the name of your function, and of course, you provide that function. So in this instance, we are hooking into the logout action in WordPress. This is a hook that's in WordPress core. Anytime you log out of WordPress, this, action, this hook gets triggered, and if you want something to happen, then you, you can hook into it. So in this instance, we are attaching the clear session data function to that hook, and we are clearing out some session variables. We're clearing out our customer ID and we're clearing out our cart because they've logged out. 
just to break into the syntax of that a little more, when, as I mentioned, you call do action with a hook name, you can optionally, there may optionally be parameters that are passed in, and it's, most of the time I see this does not happen, but if there are arguments passed, it's potentially information that might be useful to you about whatever happens to be going on at that point in the code. So unlike a filter function, you're not, you don't have to do anything with that, but it's usually just extra information that the developer thought you should have. And as we saw in the example, you're going to hook your function to it by calling the add action function. And this has a few more parameters. It has the hook name, it has the function name, then we have that priority that we talked about briefly, and that's where you're going to specify the precedence of when your hook runs, so of when your function runs. So there may be several functions all attached to the same hook name, and this priority tells WordPress what order it should run um, your code in. And if you don't provide this, which you don't have to, it's optional, it defaults to 10. So you know automatically if you want to specifically go earlier to go lower than 10, and if you specifically want your code to run later, that you're going to want to go for a higher number. The tricky part is you don't know what somebody has on their site. You don't know what functions have been hooked in, and you don't know what priority has been set for those. So sometimes you do. In WordPress, you, know, you might know, but it, there's a lot of unknowns. Sometimes you just have to go super high or super low, and it's not foolproof. The last per, um, parameter of that action is optional, and it is the number of arguments. So that is, if you're passing those optional extra values that I showed at the top of arg A, B, and C, this is where you would just specify how many arguments you are um, expecting. And if you if you don't specify them, you don't get them. I'm pretty sure that that's how it works with filters. So. All right, so filter hooks, a little different but very similar. Filter hooks are tr triggered by a function called apply filters. And in this example, you can see that we are, um, this is from WordPress core. The excerpt length function, WordPress by default, goes with 55 characters. You notice this is a little different from the do action. Because we actually have, we are filtering data, we're expecting this function to return data, we have to capture the output of the apply filters call. So apply filters is going to call run any functions that are associated with this hook name, and then whoever wrote that code is going to be sure to capture that output because you would you are going to be returning something from your function from the, the function you write. And on the other side of this, in your code, you would be adding your function, in this case custom excerpt length, and you will make a call called add filter. And add filter you're passing the hook name, and again you're passing the function name. And in this case, I want to make sure that my function runs last. I don't want to set this to 20 and have somebody else set it to 30 or 40, so I put in a priority here of 999, just to say, hey, I want to have the last word on when this function runs. So breaking this down like we did for action, the filter hooks are called with apply filter. They're called with the hook name. They're called with one with a value, and then they can also have additional arguments. As I mentioned, it is important that you capture the output of apply filters. So if you're not the one using the hook, if you're the one writing the hook, you want to make sure that you're capturing that output, otherwise there's no point in, in offering this filter up for somebody. And likewise, just like we did add action, this time for filter hooks, we're going to do add filter, passing in the hook name, the function name, the priority and the number of arguments, just like we did with action, action hooks. If you do not specify the number of arguments, it defaults to one, and you will not get those values passed to you. So it's a little, a little tricky, trickier with filter hooks. So let's see some examples. I couldn't resist. So we'll start with some action hooks because they're a little simpler. If you have done any theme development, then you are probably familiar with this example. You may have just copied and pasted it, but when you are using WP and Q scripts, you are using a WordPress core action hook. And WP and Q scripts is where WordPress um, collects all of the scripts and styles that need to be included. So in this case, we have a function called my and Q styles. 
and we are calling WP and Q style to Q the parent style in the case of a child theme, and then we're also doing a Q style on a Google font. So this is just a, a pretty normal example if you're doing theme development, and this may be a hook that you're already using, and maybe hopefully you have a better understanding of it now. So another example that's pretty common, you see everywhere in our code, uh, WP header and w, WP head and WP footer, and those functions um, are what trigger the hooks. So not those functions per se, but if you look in those functions in WordPress core, they call um, do action, WP head or WP footer. So in this case, we are using the WP footer hook. We're writing a function here called add footer scripts, and we're just putting in a JavaScript call so that it will appear on our page. <clears throat> okay, so filter hook example. I will tell you, I read the code of conduct very carefully and it says nothing about politics. So I apologize if you're a Trump supporter. So in this case, we're going to replace Trump with Drumpf. The, we're going to use the ever popular the underscore content filter, and in this case we're calling our function, which is called replace trump drump, and we are simply accepting the content that's passed in, and then we are replacing trump with drump, and then all importantly we are returning that content back to WordPress so that our 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 beautiful edit gets made across our site. Another example is, um, this. I actually pulled this from a site that I had done, is to, there's a hook on the widget title, which is a filter hook, and I had a client who said, oh, I have blog categories, but I really want blog to link to my actual blog page. So in this example, we wrote a function called link posts widget title, and in this example, we're specifically just checking if the title is blog, and if it is, then I'm adding a link around that text. And then I'm returning the title no matter what. So even if I didn't make that change to it, I'm returning the title. Otherwise, there would be no title. And that could be the case, too. So I couldn't talk about hooks without including this hook, especially if you've done, if you do theme development. This is one of the more complex, complex hooks in WordPress, but it is also super powerful, super helpful. The pre-get post hook is a hook which occurs after the query object has been created, but before the query has actually run. So when you're loading any of your pages on your site, um, both in the admin or on the front end, um, this is a hook that runs, and if you want to change the content of your page, what, what content is included, this is a way for you to change what content is being pulled before the query is run. So as opposed to creating a page template where you, on the page, just write a whole new query, which is making WordPress run that query twice, using the pre-get post hook allows you to alter the query before it runs. So you don't have to go for an extra hit to the database. You can just change the query before you, before you run it. So this is kind of an odd filter because it seems like it should be a filter hook. From everything that I've told you, it would make sense that you would get the query parameters, you would make your changes, and you would pass them back. And the deceptive thing about pre-get post is that it's actually an action hook. And what it does is it actually references the query object, it passes it by reference. And what you do in whatever function you write is you directly modify the query object. So you actually don't need to pass anything back. But it's deceptive, like I said, because you are actually filtered, you are essentially changing the content, which is what you think of with a, a filter hook. So here's an example of using the pre-get posts um, hook. I haven't included any cats yet, so this is my requisite cat inclusion. I have a function here called cats home filter posts, and what I'm going to do in this function is make sure that I am only pulling cats on my home page and that I am pulling all of the cats. So when I call this function, the first thing I need to do is check that I'm actually on the right query. And this is 
probably the most dangerous part of using pre-get posts is that you need to be very careful about when you're modifying the query. So in this case, I'm using, I'm checking two different um, conditional tags, is main query and also is home. And by checking those, I'm isolating that I'm only in this one place. It is probably the source of more site debugging working in this function at times of trying to isolate exactly down to um, what you want to do. But the main things you want to think about are is main query, um, is admin, yes or no. You want to think about you know exactly what kind, you want to be very specific here because if you are not, you end up filtering content in a lot of other places. In this case, because I'm checking is home, I don't actually need to check that I'm in the admin. But if I was just checking something like is archive, or is, I'm sorry, not is archive, but is post type. If I'm checking is post type, that could, that's great, but I could be in the admin, and I could be filtering something out of the admin and making it impossible to find that content again. So. I show you this. <laughs> I show you this hook because I think it's so important. But I just warn you: be very careful. So in this case, I'm checking: if, am I on the main query? In other words, I'm not a secondary query. I'm in the main query that's pulling the content for the page I'm on. And I'm also checking: is home? So am I on a home page which is showing the posts on my site? If I was showing a static page, I would check his front page. And then on here, I'm directly modifying the query object. And then, so I'm setting the category name, and I'm also setting post per page to negative one. So by adding this on my site, my home page is only going to show posts in the cats category, and it's going to show all of them as opposed to the 10 or 20 that I might have my site set to normally show. So you can create your own custom hooks. As you've seen, it's pretty straightforward. You can put do underscore action and apply filter calls wherever you want in your code. You do want to make sure that you names that are going to be unique. You don't want to be using a name that might be used by a different plugin because you might have other you might you might have other things running that people aren't intending. So if you're you'll notice most of the WordPress hooks begin with WP. If you are in a plugin, you want to prefix your hooks with something related to your plugin just to reduce the likelihood that you're going to have a conflict. It's still not foolproof, but um, you just be as careful as possible. So do underscore action and you literally just come up with whatever name you want. Apply underscore filters is the equivalent of do action, but for filters. I do wish it was do filter, but it's not. It's apply filters. And you're going to give the, the hook name, and you're also going to pass whatever piece of content it is that you want to alter. And again, you could pass extra parameters if you wanted to. Sometimes contextual parameters are passed as well, but they're not required. Which brings us to finding hooks. Uh, how do you know what hooks to find? Obviously, you can look in the codex and you can see names of hooks. Some plugin or theme developers provide lists of their hooks, but the easiest way is to just search for do underscore action or for apply underscore filters. Especially in the case of additional parameters that, that are being passed, it's really helpful that WordPress is open source because you can go right in and discover exactly uh, what's being passed. And I suggest if you're a developer that you use an IDE because it makes it so easy to right-click on a function name, go into that function, and see exactly what's going on in there. So you may think that you need to do something out of the box and, and hack the plugin or create your own copy, but it might be that the plugin developer has very thoughtfully left you some hooks. Let's hope. We're not going to go in depth into these, but I just wanted to give you a uh, kind of a smattering of some of the other hook related functions that are out there. Has filter and has action let you check that there is a function attached to a particular hook name. Current filter will return to you the most recent filter that was processed. Doing filter, doing action lets you check with a hook name if, if a uh, particular hook is being run or if you pass it with no hook. Um, I believe it will return to you the name of what is being run at the time. Did action will actually, kind of sounds like it should be true or false, but it returns to you the number of times that, um, that something was hooked into it, into that hook name. Remove filter and remove action are ways for you to remove hooks that other people have added. And I find this very helpful in theme development. Um, I don't, you've probably all used a theme at some point that came with three different sliders. 
And if you're only using one of them or none of them, remove, um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of DQA. I all confused which talk I'm on. So remove filter, remove action um, will let you remove other things that have been added. And obviously you want to be careful if you're removing somebody else's uh, code, but it is a powerful way for you to, again, alter what's happening by saying, I don't want this, this other function to run. And remove all filters, remove all actions. I really don't recommend that, but sometimes there are cases where you might need that, so now you know it's there. This uh, reference material, all of these links are hyperlinked. This is really just a few of links out there of some of the resources within WordPress. Again, the most powerful way to actually find things I find is just to search, but this will give you a little more information on how to use them and also um, syntax, what they are, what's actually available. And now you can get into your own mischief with hooks. So that's all I got for you. I'd love to, if you guys have questions, please come and use the microphone. And uh, thank you very much. impacts to using hooks? Um, the short answer is that there clearly is and that it's running some code. Uh, I would say not really. Obviously, if you, it, it's up to you if you hook a lot of things into a hook. Um, but really, when you put a hook in your code, typically it's for somebody else to use. So it's just a quick call, and if there's nothing there, there's nothing there. Um, certainly, I don't think being afraid of potential performance should outweigh the flexibility of putting it in there. I don't, I don't believe that it's a big hit, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a short bit. <laughs> to the code base that was on a particular site, certainly you could search and see what's being used. I've certainly uh, searched, you know, on a site, but you, you know, in essence, it's only if you know that specific site do you know what's being called. But there's no programmatic way to call a function and list all of the... Actually, I should, I should back up, sorry, and repeat the question. So the question was, is there any way to programmatically determine all of the functions that are attached to a particular hook? And... So I don't, I'm not sure if there is, other than searching through the code. There may be, but it would vary on every site installation. Do you know what I mean? So it's not, it's very specific who, how many plugins they have running and what, what code is out there. Any other questions?